Portal season is now open. Offensive linemen are wanted here. Let's get after it. You are Locked On Bandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Bandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Today is the opening of a 15-day spring transfer portal window, and Vandy has some needs. That's O-line, and then O-line. And then O-line, and maybe some more. All right, Nate Johnson is progressing quite well. Um, He had his best scrimmage of the spring this past weekend. We'll talk about that. He is a factor for the quarterback one job. Also, does Vandy need to add weapons for him or whoever is the quarterback one? Well, thanks for making Locked on Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube as a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team. Every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So with the portal season opening, Vandy definitely needs to add depth in a lot of spots. However, offensive line is the most important. Why? Well, we went over this. In yesterday's episode, we talked about, you know, how in the scrimmage and how in the spring uh, session that, you know, Vandy's depth at the offensive line position is not really there, right? You have some good starters. You have some good guys that can contribute there, and and uh, but you don't have anybody really behind them pushing them. I mean, you have a few guys, um, but right now you have eight active guys. That's not enough to really kind of make a push for those second string guys. Um, that's not enough to, to to add quality depth. You need at minimum 10. And, you know, you just – when you don't know, when you got guys medically retiring, you've got things happening with depth, you got injuries that take place throughout the course of a season. Uh, you got a couple guys coming in from a high school uh, recruiting class. But uh, for, for the most part, Vandy needs to add one or two. And – Depth is absolutely important because, A, um, you can run successfully two full units of offense. Two, if you got depth beyond that, you've got people for the scout team and you've got people that can uh, develop quality uh, and get quality reps during practice in other periods in which may not, you know, may not necessarily be offensive focused, but you've got guys that can, uh, that can develop and, and, um, lastly, like it's just as violent of a sport as football is, is mu- as physical of a position that offensive line is and the toll it takes on your body. You just need guys that are there that can step in. You need rotational guys. You need guys that can come in, especially as, as much as Vandy's going to be running with Tim Beck. Uh, you need a good stable of running backs. They've got the good. Uh, they've got good runners at the quarterback position, so you have that element to it as well. But you need good quality offensive linemen, and you need more than just five. Which right now, you that's a you got five that you know that have had starting experience in the SEC, good, bad, or indifferent. They've had that experience, so they're not going to be completely lost. And then you have a bunch of guys that they've played a little bit or we know absolutely nothing about because they haven't really played. And you got one guy in that room that has a uh, flip flop from offense to defense, you know, probably more than, more than once. So it's important because you need the depth is important because you need these guys to, uh, to get, to get a job done. You need these guys, you, Vandy, for the philosophy that they have chosen to go with, you need quality offensive linemen. And to, to get that, you need to find those guys in the meantime, in the portal, get these high school kids in, develop them, have them come up through the ranks and create you a little system of development. I think Chris Kleenakis is a really good offensive line coach. He, he was successful at Kennesaw State. He was successful um, developing offensive lines where he's been. Now he just needs the bodies to be able to do so. And you can't really get any good quality work at practice if you don't have the bodies. If you you can't really get a good run game if 
by the end of the second quarter, your guys are just physically spent because there's nobody to come in and, and rotate. Um, you need quality depth because the defense needs a look at practice and you don't want to use your starters all the time because those guys get wear and tear and get fatigue, which is what you're doing right now in the spring. So you need to add quality of depth so that these, you know, everybody can develop, everybody can get their quality reps and you can stay as fresh as you possibly can because college football is a grind. And if Vandy's going to go bowling, it's a grind, right? You've got to, you've got to endure, you know, what, four weeks of camp, 12 weeks of the season, another four weeks of bowl practice and a bowl game. If your bowl game is going to be possible, you've got to have guys that can remain, you know, you've got to have guys that can play. You've got to have eight quality starters on your offensive line. And I know only five of them can actually start, but you need eight quality starters that can go in at any point. And then the rest of the guys are, are depth guys. Like if somebody gets banged up for a couple of plays, you need somebody, well, they can, you can roll in your backup right tackle, even if he's not part of the eight. The eight is, you know, if you, if you need a starter, if somebody's out for a significant period of time, if you're in the eight, which means you're one of the three reserves, you get the start, even though somebody else might get the playing time in the short term, you as part of the eight would get the start. Um, so you need like they need to be able to build that plus some depth down the line, plus you know, other things. Like let's say you're blowing out Alcorn State. You don't need your starting center in there in the fourth quarter because you only got eight guys and you can't really take your starting center out. You need to develop depth behind that, or otherwise you're going to get yourself in a very, very precarious situation, and you don't want to do that. And you want to be able to be successful running the ball. I think the schemes are going to be great. I think the schemes – I think if you're a portal offensive lineman, I think the schemes are what exactly you want because you have a guy that can can keep defenses off balance. This would be a great place to play. Now, I saw some some names that were in the portal – and I feel like these guys would be extremely good at uh, – I think these guys would be extremely good uh, coming here. So uh, one of those names – well, let's just say pretty much the entire Louisville offensive lineman, offensive line group is coming. Um, Ruben Unige, I think that's how you say it, Trevante Sylvester, Lance Robinson, Victor Cutter. Um, I did a little thing about Ruben Unige – Earlier, um, you know, when I first when I first did the show, I think it was back in January uh, during the first transfer portal window. Um, I don't think that he, uh, I don't, I think he may have withdrew his name. I don't know what happened, but he's back in. Maybe he was thinking about going and he didn't jump. Now he's now he's jumping. Um, so that would be a massive, massive get. He could get in there and play some tackle um, and, and give you not only quality of depth but possibly give you a starting right tackle, which is a little bit unsettled right now due to injuries and, you know, again, depth issues. Um, but you, you know, Trevante Sylvester, Lance Robinson, those are, uh, you know, those are four names that you could really kind of get behind um, on, in that position group. Um, Victor Cutter, um, he was, uh, you know, he, he was, he was set to, to he, he may or may not be. So I, I don't know about that, um, but Unage. Actually, I remember this. Unage transferred to Louisville from Houston uh, in January, and now he's – I guess he's going to go back into the portal. So I don't know how, how good that is, but um, I think talent-wise he's he's outstanding. And, uh, you know, this would be some – you know, this would be some good gets uh, there. And then uh, other offensive linemen that you could uh, – that you could go after. There's a guy from there. There's a there's a guy I saw in the portal from Illinois. Um, I think he would be really good. There's a guy from Ohio that just declared. Um, he's a little bit on the. Well, he's a defensive lineman, but he's a little bit on the small side. Um, you know, you know this uh, this. There's going to be a lot more names added uh, to this portal. Um, before this is all said and done, there's a lot of lot. There's going to be a lot of linebackers in the portal. Just so you know, um, that's going to be uh, 
that's going to be fancy. That's going to be good um, for uh, for what's go- for what's happening. Um, one name that is not really an offensive lineman, but Elijah Herring uh, from Tennessee. Does he have a chance? I, you know, that's another one. I think that's uh, that's another one that I think is interesting. So, um, just you know, keep your eyes out for uh, for what's going to happen with the offensive line group in this portal. It's vastly important that they add depth uh, with this group, and it's vastly important uh, for not only the success of the offense, for the success of the quarterback. Um, I, I think if Vandy wants to keep their goals intact, they've got to they've got to get this depth and they've got to get it fast and they've got to get it in this portal. So they can sell scheme, they can sell playing time, they can sell a bunch of different things. NIL, Nashville, um, you know, new facilities on the way. You know, they can sell a lot of things to make this to make this offensive line job enticing. I don't know like where these guys think they can go. But if they want to play in the best conference uh, in the country uh, for a team that you're going to get a hell of a lot of playing time, which if you're trying to go to the NFL, all that matters is you get on tape. If you can get on tape, run blocking somebody, mauling somebody, pass protecting, it doesn't matter if the team wins, goes to bowl game, whatever. If you're talented, you're talented. It doesn't matter. The NFL will find you and they will want you and they will draft you. You just got to find the right situation to where you can get as much film out there as you possibly can. Don't just go to some football factory because you, you know, you, you just want to say, hey, I played for Ohio State or hey, I played for Michigan or hey, I played for Georgia or Bama or whatever. Go to a place where you're going to get film. And Vandy, if you're an offensive lineman, Vandy's definitely that place. So, um, Quarterback. Speaking of quarterback one, um, Nate Johnson, I, I think, is really kind of starting to make things a little difficult on this coaching staff. Excuse me, my my, uh, my allergies are getting best of me a little bit. Um, but uh, I think he's really starting to kind of push this job, the envelope of this job, and he's really kind of making things difficult. We'll talk about that here in a minute and the weapons that surround him and does do this. Does Vandy need to address those in the transfer portal? We'll talk about all that next. All right, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You guessed it. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is also in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in the app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Well, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. Also, Monopoly Go. Remember those games from the McDonald's Cups? Well, Monopoly Go is a presenting sponsor. I've been told that I'm a competitive person. Is this I I think this is true. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, it's true. I got a competitive side. Well, I think we all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that you bring that bring you big money. The best part? Well, it's messing with my friends. I can charge them rent. On my iconic properties, just like Classic Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And leaderboard shows me who's got the biggest monop- who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments and earn huge rewards. So get in the game <clears throat> and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now. Free, it's free on the App Store or the Google Play. Well, we've all been there. Either as a player or a fan, it's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, and you're not sure if your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep. Lift your head up and say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends and get the most riches and biggest empire. That's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards, to compare your progress to your buddies. 
There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. You can charge other players rent for your iconic properties like Boardwalk or Park Place. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments and get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. I think, that was, I, think I read more than just the one script, but that's okay. Monopoly Go. Get it. Welcome back. Segment number two of the Locked On Vady Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We thank you, everydayers. You guys make it cool, right? You guys make it cool. You know what else is cool? It's Locked On NFL's Mock Draft Live, live on April 17th at 7 Eastern, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. You find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern to hear about who the local lockdown experts are picking for every NFL franchise, live reactions from local college football experts, and even the fantasy football angle, Locked On Dynasty. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern, streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Whew, that's a lot. So, um, but it's going to be fun. I love the mock draft. I love the NFL draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, Nate Johnson, speaking of fun, Nate Johnson's been developing quite well. He's had his he's had his up and downs, but uh, this past weekend he's had his best performance of the spring. It shows me that he's starting to get comfortable because you know anytime you're learning a new system and you're trying, anytime you're trying to do things that aren't quite in your comfort zone it can get a little dicey well he's definitely going to be a factor in this quarterback race i can promise you that um, that was that's always been the case i know at some time i know at some points that that that, that has kind of been a little eh, i'm not sure but i i think he really is uh becoming a factor and he's I mean like I said he is he is uh he's dialed in a little bit he is uh, you know he has uh made a little bit more anticipatory throws he's uh he's moved the ball there he he hasn't he's been taking care of the ball better um he's had you know some things they measure I didn't know they really measured this in football but uh plus minus um you know he had a better he was on the plus side of that plus minus and he was um he was better he stood out amongst the other quarterbacks as well um in the scrimmage uh Berlowitz is obviously I think ahead of Dickey at this point but again um it's gonna be a battle and, and these guys are these guys are learning so that's uh that's good to see but Nate Johnson like I said two quarterback system I mean it's not it's not unreasonable to think that he's going to be factored in because of the things that he can do and can do well, and that could that he could do well from day one to now, which is running and throwing on the run and, and play action and booting and all that stuff. So, uh, when you when you factor all of those things in, it makes him a very valuable piece to what this quarterback race is becoming. And for that to happen, for him to really kind of uh, factor in. When Diego Pavia comes in, he's got to figure out a better way to be more accurate, a better way to be more anticipatory, and a better way to just have a lot, a little bit more command of the huddle and the offense, and being able, to, being able to check in and out of plays and do the things that Pavia is presumably going to be able to do when he steps foot on campus. So it's going to be, I mean, there, there's a lot of promise here with uh, with the quarterback situation. There's a lot of things that can happen uh, that can go well. Uh, for uh, for Nate Johnson, so it's far from over, uh, and I think Pavia is going to have his hands full trying to uh, trying to hold him off. and And I think Nate Johnson is proving that there is room for a package for him. There's room for him to be able to contribute to this offense dynamically with the run game and be able to be a force that teams have to prepare for. And it's not a true two quarterback system. 
like people are probably afraid of me saying, like, hey, two quarterback system. You know the old saying: if you don't, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't really have one. Which, I mean, in a lot of situations, that is true when you have two similar guys that you're just rotating in and out, like what Steve Spurrier did with Jesse Palmer and Doug Johnson. Uh, but uh, it's not like that. These two guys are these two guys are different. Pavia is probably more polished guy in the pocket. He's probably a more downhill runner than Johnson is, and he he's he's got a little bit more. Um, toughness about him he's just he's just been around a little bit more uh in the game of college football but nate johnson's faster more explosive and has a better deep ball has more live arm but his accuracy issues tend to wane on him a little bit his decision making is not quite polished yet not that the not that it's terrible and, and can't get better but with time that's the, that's the key word there key phrase i guess with time he can develop into a really good decision maker as he understands where the ball needs to go within the system. So he's a factor. He can do some things and he he can they can start him off with a with a uh, package of plays and really just kind of develop there. But he's got to show that he can handle it and I think he's and I think the point is is he's starting to show that he can handle that. So um in order for him to be good and successful, he's got to have weapons around him. Uh, are the weapons that they have and that they've gotten out of the portal thus far enough? We'll talk about that next. All right, talking about LinkedIn, LinkedIn jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. So LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidate within 24 hours. You hire professionals, two hire professionals, you get professionals like a professional. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn dot com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply all right welcome back wrap it up the show here uh it's port it's the open to portal season we're talking portal 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 um got nate johnson out of the portal he's progressing quite nicely so portal guys do uh do work and are effective so that's going to be a lot of fun to navigate over this next 15 day period, over this next couple of weeks to kind of see what they need. Vandy needs offensive line men, not men, men, plural. They need offensive line men, plural. But uh, we talked about Nate Johnson and how he's developing. But, you know, I, I think when you look at what Vandy lost in, in the portal back in December and what they've gained, the weapons that he has around him. Is it enough? Quincy Skinner, he's going to be a dang good receiver, all right? But is he enough? Is there enough for him, for Quincy Skinner to do what he does best? Is Jeremiah Dillon enough for this offense? Okay. Loic found you. Know nothing about him. Hoskins, Cole Hoskins, is he enough to kind of factor in as that fourth wide receiver? Cole Spence. Tyler Fortenberry, are they enough at tight end? Is the running back room, are they enough? In the world of college football, in the fickle world of modern college football, it's never enough. You need guys. You need depth. You need bodies. You need things around you to help you with quality depth. And that being said, 
you need quality depth. If you're going to be a running team, you need three quality running backs. Chase Gillespie, is he that guy? I I don't know. We won't know until we get some quality depth on the offensive line to really kind of get a gauge of it. Um, he could be, but I don't think it would kill Vandy to get a fourth guy to come in and compete. I mean, you never know. I mean, Andrew Paul just hit the transfer portal. He'd be a nice addition, right? I don't know if you saw him go in beast mode, but that guy's built like a freaking sledgehammer. You need that, right? You need that. And so if you watched him in Georgia spring game, he was absolutely running over people. He didn't have he didn't have that many stats because the two guys in front of him were going to the freaking NFL. How's he going to get any carries on with that? So those are the some some depth pieces that that we have. Okay, wide receiver. Do we need another dynamic guy? I think it's always good to have one in the mix. I think it's always good to have another outside guy so Quincy Skinner and, and Junior Sherrill can kind of patrol the middle, the inside, the short stuff and get yaks. I think it's always good to add depth. I think it's all you know, I think those guys are great. But I think it's always good to have quality depth. I think it's always good to have, you know, if you can get a star, get a star. If there's a guy available like that that needs a place that he can step in and and get some immediate playing time, I, I think that's you got to entertain that. Elijah Herring, do, do they need inside linebacker? I don't know, but if he but if he's willing to come to, to Vandy, I think that's good. That's not necessarily a weapon for for the quarterback. That's a that's a weapon to help the quarterback get the ball back when 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 he has to give it up or for whatever reason, punt, field goal, PAT, you know turnover, whatever the reason is, you need a good linebacker that's going to help you get the ball back uh, so that you can go down and score. Okay? Like, you need quality depth at some of these skill positions. Do they need another cornerback? Probably. I wouldn't turn it down. There's some good guys out there. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. There's a guy, there's an offensive lineman from Notre Dame, senior 6'6", 3'10", offensive tackle. Be a great, great addition. All right. There's a running back that's out there from like I feel like I feel like Louisville's entire team is getting in the transfer portal. That's not good, by the way. Um, and remember me talking about Penny Boone. There's guys re-entering the portal from Louisville. That's really not good. So either those guys are just going to be unhappy everywhere they go, or something is going on at Louisville. So. Um, Penny Boone, we talked about him back in January as a possibility. He could get, he could be somebody that can get in the mix a little bit. Um, there's a billion and a half wide receivers out there. Um, there's some edge guys of uh, Purdue, TJ Sheffield. Um, unfortunately, he commit committed to UConn. There's that's somebody that he could have that could have been uh, added down here at Vandy. Um, there's some defensive lineman guys. There's some. I mean, there's some. There's some good. There's some good options out there, and a lot of guys that are re-entering the portal. There's a wide receiver from Ohio that I think would be a very, very good addition to to the portal. So, um, Andrew Shambly from Arkansas, an offensive lineman, would have fit in that first that first uh, <laughs> that first segment, but. Um, he's somebody that I think we could be a target because I think Vandy needs offensive tackle. But there's a lot of weapons out there. There's a lot of guys out there, and if Vandy's going to be a heavy run team, that that's what they've got to look at um, in the portal is to bolster and do everything that they can to bolster their their rushing attack. <clears throat> what does that look like? Does it, is it adding another slot guy that can add an element to your RPO game that will make your running backs good? Is it adding both? Because I think there's room for both. I think you're going to lose some people. Um, is there? I mean, what, what what are the options? There's there's plenty of options. It just depends on what you want to do. It depends on what you want to feature, how much you want to feature the quarterback in the run game, and how much RPO that you want. And how important is it to have a guy that can stretch the field vertically or have a guy that can stretch the field and put pressure on you horizontally at an intermediate to shallow depth? It just depends on what you want, when you want it, how you want to feature it. And it's uh, it's going to come down to those factors. 
what is Tim Beck ultimately looking for with this offense and is the receiving core that he has enough with adding the high school guys in there too. Is that enough for that wide receiver group? We'll find out. We'll kind of see what Vandy's uh, options are in the portal. Uh, They have plenty of NIL money. They have plenty of options there. So it'll be fun to watch and see, but they need to get offensive line. That's goal number one. Defensive line would be great as well. Um, And then address the skill positions as you see fit. So um, that's all we got today, though. Um, Keep your eyes peeled on the transfer portal and see what happens. See who enters. See who comes back to Vandy or to Vandy uh, from the portal. See who enters from Vandy to the portal and vice, you know, all the above. But uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow on a hump day episode of the Locked on Vandy podcast. Thank you for listening. Follow us on social at Locked on Vandy on all socials. We thank you for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. But until then, anchor down.